uh, as a beetle, we made it, and there was nothing to do. Uh, we had money, we had uh, fame, and there was no joy. You know? And then I met Yoko, and she was making it as an avant-garde artist, and uh, we both tried to find something we had in common, a common goal in life, because we couldn't, she couldn't rock and roll with me, and I couldn't avant-garde with her. I mean, we can, but that's what we thought at the time. So we decided the thing we had in common was love, and from love came peace. So we decided to work for world peace. And every country has had a violent revolution for one reason or the other. Not one of them has the freedom we're all talking about. So we're saying give peace a chance, you know, like nobody's ever done it before. And it's not a matter of, we're not thinking in terms of 10 years, we're thinking in terms of peace forever, you know. And the, everybody's talking about now, I want peace now. We can get peace now if we want it now. And the left wing talk about giving the power to the people, you know. Anybody knows that the people have the power. All we have to do is awaken the power in the people. The people are unaware. It's like they're not educated to realize that they have power. They put the politicians in power. They vote for the local mayor. The people do it. But the system is so geared that everybody believes that just the father will fix everything. The father being the government. Government will fix everything. It is all government's fault you know, back, shake a fist at the government, well, we are the government. The people are the government and the people have the power, but we must try and make them aware of this. And Yoko was telling me about this great old ancient Chinese book, which tells you how to fight the battle, you know. And, uh, and it says, the, the, the battle is always lost within the castle, you know, like America's falling within, not from within, from yeah. uh, the commies coming, yeah. the, it's falling apart inside. And this book on how to fight the good fight says that never have every door shut. The enemy then will... Everybody's going to come round and attack. But if you leave one door open, you know where they're going to come in. And then you get them. So intu intuitively, we're doing that. And we leave a door open. They're so busy shouting about haircuts and genitals and naked and long hair that they... They concentrate their ammunition there, we know where it comes from, and we get on with the job of selling and, or doing whatever we're doing. Yeah, yeah. And I believe that. You leave the door open, man, and that's where the door they'll come in, you know. I think the only way to do it is Gandhi's way. And that's non-violent, passive, positive, or whatever they call it those days. And though no one of us knows what the shape of the new civilization will be, somehow, in the singing of the ayahuasca songs in the rainforest, in the tremendous hypermetallic transcendental off-planetary flash of psilocybin, in the uh, teaching of the self-transforming machine elves that seem to dwell in the DMT dimension, we see that the ordinary linear expectations of history are breaking down and that uh, the, the truth of the eminence of the mystery is breaking through all the structures of denial of uh, the male dominator paradigm that has been in place so long. The way to make this birth process smooth, the way to bring it to a conclusion that will not betray the thousands and thousands of generations of people who, who suffered birth and disease and migration and starvation and lonely death so that we could sit here this evening. The redeeming of the human enterprise all lies then in helping this thing come to birth. And each artist is an antenna to the transcendental other. And as we go with our own history into that thing, and then create a unique confluence of our uniqueness and its uniqueness, we collectively create an arrow, an arrow out of history, out of time, perhaps even out of matter, that will redeem then the idea uh, that man is good, redeem the idea that man is good. This is the promise of art, 
and its fulfillment is never more near than the present moment. The consciousness of this, con this country, this world, this, this, this global entity, this human race, the consciousness of this human race is altering right in front of our eyes with the internet. Yeah. And the internet and psychedelic experiences together this shit has changed more in this hundred years than at any time ever. The, just the idea of how people feel about life on Earth, it's so different. Yeah. It's so different than at any time. And we're riding the way. We're lucky. We're so lucky. What a crazy ride it's been from being a cop to this. How the, how the fuck, how, how did you get to this point, man? Is this your destiny? You, do you feel at a certain point in time obligated to disseminate this information? Oh, uh, I, th this is the Three Stooges school of spiritual evolution. I mean, it's like, I have no doubt that something larger than me uh, tapped me and, and, and... Gave you the ball. Yeah, and, and has kept me and sustained me and, and really kind of made jokes of any other plans that I had along the way for what I thought I wanted. Um, and I'm really aware of that now and I'm living that, you know, spiritually connected to the fact that, you know, there is something really good out here. There is something that's showing itself on this planet now that's just and that it's fair and that it's loving and it does have power. I'm seeing crack. It's like watching the Matrix, you know, when the, when the Matrix starts and the little bits of light start coming through and, 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 you know, and all these people out here in the world right now, they're living in a matrix that's falling apart exactly like it did in the movie. It's like, oh, wait a minute, there's a big hole in that building over there. And there's a, that's metaphorically what we're seeing happen all around us. And there's a lot of people who really get that they're in a matrix and are starting to move out. And there's others who are equally moved to try and go back and reinforce it. And those are people making their own choices, I think, about which way they're going to go. So you are not pessimistic. You're optimistic. A lot of people might think that you're a doom and gloom guy, mm. but you're no. You're no. You're you're. Let's be happy. We're gonna get rid of the bad system. We're gonna get rid of the bad guys. There is a balancing that is taking place. It's long overdue. It's a. It's, it's as a Doc Holliday would say. It's a reckoning. What an amazing time to be alive. You yeah, know, it really is. It's an amazing time to be uh, at the point in human history and the history of this planet and the history of you know. It just, it's all very strange that it's all taking place in our lifetime right now. And this is uh, really, a, it's an amazing moment, you know. I hope we get through it cool. I hope we all keep our eyes open because uh, uh, even though these are the darkest of times, this is also an age of miracles. And we need to just keep ourselves open to the expectation that good things can happen without our permission. And there's wisdoms, uh, you know, there's a lot of other wisdom out here and there's, there's a lot of light showing. There's never been a time in human history where the access to information is easier. And when the access to information is easy, people can get the truth out. When people can get the truth out and they can get ideas out mm -hmm. and they can get an ideology of happiness and of sustaining your, your, you know, your environment and of, of, of subsistence and of a community and of love and friendship, it's very possible to foster that and grow. You know, we don't have to all be conquerors. No. We don't have to be all cunts raping the world. It doesn't have to be that way. That's right. Right? We, we can just be human beings and enjoy our time here because yes. it is, in fact, temporary. And like all sort of patterns of behavior that people get stuck in, whether it's fucking gambling or excessive masturbation or whatever the fuck you get hooked on, yeah. you can also get hooked on running the world. You can also get hooked on fucking over the world. So these people are sick. Yes. They're sick. They need to wake up. You need to pay attention to Michael Rupert, bitches, because he just dropped some science. Thank you, sir. That was awesome. That was, it was a great time, man. That was one of my favorite podcasts ever. You I, said some awesome shit. Are it we was done a already? I, 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 yeah, I, I, man. We've been doing it for two hours and 40 minutes. Shit. I just, you know, I, I just got so into this.